You listen up and you listen good. The great Straw Hat Luffy is the man who's gonna lead this era soon. I saw that for myself two years ago. He is the future King of the Pirates. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. And today we are going to be getting slightly meta by examining a character who I feel encapsulates the feelings of all of us, the fans, with Bartolomeo. Bartolomeo is a rather, how shall we put this, unique individual within the One Piece world with a bold and flamboyant sense of style, as well as a give no crap attitude to match. As a result, Bartolomeo often comes across as off-putting to those meeting him for the first time, as well as to those meeting him for the second, third, and fourth times. Look, he's an acquired taste, as he can be absurdly vulgar on some occasions and deliberately antagonizes those around him. However, he certainly isn't without some sort of moral compass, as he does care quite deeply for his crew. Because that's right, Bartolomeo is the captain of the Barto Club, a pirate organization formed with one primary goal in mind, which is to worship the Straw Hat Pirates. All right, lots to take in there, but let's focus on that last part for a second because it's difficult to go forward without it. Now, while Bartolomeo first made his appearance in the Dress Rosa arc over 700 chapters into the series, his personal history with the journey of One Piece goes much further back to the days of East Blue, where he would have a fateful encounter at Logtown. Essentially, in his younger days, Bartolomeo somehow managed to become a mafia kingpin, ruling what he himself had described as a humble criminal underworld with no more than a mere 150 towns under his thumb. However, but that would all change one day in Logtown when Bartolomeo was present for the failed execution of Monkey D. Luffy. Bartolomeo was one of the many witnesses who watched Luffy proudly state that he was going to become King of the Pirates and proceeded to be saved from certain death by a bolt of very conveniently timed lightning. Bartolomeo went on to take this as a miracle and he began eagerly following Luffy's journey through the Grand Line, reading up on his exploits, defeating a warlord of the sea on the desert nation of Alabasta, causing the destruction of the judicial island of any slobby, becoming part of the one and only mass break out in the history of Impel Down, and finally, the tragic and legendary events that occurred during the Paramount War. But this was quite a lot to take in, and Bartolomeo, who now held an obsession, not just with Luffy, but with the entirety of the Straw Hats, then set out to emulate his role models, abandoning his criminal empire and becoming a pirate. And so Bartolomeo founded the Bato Club, a crew consisting of his former gangsters, and they set sail on their flagship, the Going Luffy Senpai. In terms of his crew, Bartolomeo, like Luffy Senpai himself, cares deeply for them, and we should take special note of the staff officer of the Bato Club, Gambia. Bartolomeo has a very strong relationship with him, and even went to the effort of defeating a vice admiral of the Marines after Gambia had been beaten up by him. Also something of arguable relevance, Gambia is very important to Bartolomeo because the Bato Club doesn't actually have a proper navigation and so in times of need, they often call Gambia's grandmother to ask her for advice. Although her words of wisdom are usually general housekeeping tips and not at all helpful for their dire situations, traversing the most unpredictable stretch of water in the world. Regardless, entering the Grand Line from East Blue, just as the Straw Hats did, Bartolome would very swiftly make a name for himself, and within a year, he became quite an infamous rookie pirate. This is because, and at some points this can be hard to believe, but Bartolomeo is far more than a blind fanboy, and his combat prowess has served him exceptionally well on his voyage. Not only is he a skilled hand-to-hand -hand fighter, as well as highly durable, but he also possesses a pretty wild devil fruit known as the Bari Bari no Mi. This is a paramecia type fruit that allows Bartolomeo to conjure barriers that for all intents and purposes are effectively impenetrable, which are not only fantastic for defensive purposes, but they can also be used defensively by launching them towards enemies and even coating certain parts of his body to make physical attacks that more devastating. And this is an ability that would be put on full display during his involvement in the Dress Rosa arc. Essentially, Bartolomeo and his crew made their way to the country of love, passion, and toys, like many others, with the ambition of entering a tournament being held at the Corridor Coliseum, the prize of which was a devil fruit known as the Mera Mera no Mi. Now, while most participants wanted to win this fruit for the powers it held, Bartolomeo's driving force for competing in the tournament was because this was the fruit once wielded by his idol Luffy's sworn brother, Port Gasty Ace, and Bartolomeo wanted to win the fruit and present it to Luffy. However, Bartolomeo was in for the experience of a lifetime when it became apparent that his hero, Monkey D. Luffy, had come personally to participate in the tournament. However, he was not to realize this immediately, and instead Bartolomeo was put in Block B of the four block battle royale system. During the Block B bout, Bartolomeo sufficiently annoyed the audience by urinating off the side of the ring, laying down casually, and just generally being Bartolomeo. And in the end, what Block B would come down to was a fierce king punch thrown by Elisabello, an attack that was rumored to be capable of taking down one of the four emperors should it hit them cleanly. However, Bartolomeo made himself completely immune to this technique by erecting one of his barriers, 
and once the King Punch had disposed of everyone else, Bartolomeo proceeded to defeat Elisabello, thus winning the match. Much to the audience's disgust, and moving on to the final. Now afterwards, Bartolomeo would overhear a very interesting conversation in which one of his fellow competitors was revealed to be the one and only Luffy, at which point Bartolomeo began fanboying like crazy and continuously stalking him, determined to approach Luffy, but far too nervous to take the plunge. Although eventually Bartolomeo would meet Luffy and even offered to win the Mera Mera no Mi and present it to him. But it was at this stage, of course, that a certain Sabo would make his shock reveal of being alive and requested permission from Luffy to eat the Mera Mera no Mi. And from here, Bartolomeo more or less teamed up with Sabo in the final match of the tournament, an event that was never properly concluded, but saw Sabo consume the Mera Mera no Mi just as promised. However, this was far from Bartolomeo's end in the Dressrosa arc, as he would go on to assist the Straw Hats in the downfall of Doflamingo, during which he would meet several more members of his idolized Straw Hat crew, such as Zoro and Robin. With that said, Bartolomeo's most notable action amongst this chaos would be a fight against Gladius, an officer of the Don Quixote Pirates. And after suffering many grievous wounds, Bartolomeo would emerge victorious, finishing his opponent with an homage to Luffy as he conjured a small barrier around his hand and smacked Gladius down with a bari bari no pistol an attack very clearly molded on Luffy's Gomu Gomu no pistol. Bartolomeo would later team up with the rest of the gladiators of the tournament and prove integral in delaying the closure of Doflamingo's birdcage by crafting a barrier large enough for everyone to push, thus buying Luffy the time he needed to land the final blow and free dress Rosa of Doflamingo's tyranny. As a result of this overwhelming victory, Bartolomeo would become one of the seven captains who pledged their allegiance to Luffy, becoming a founding member of the organization known as the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. And despite the fact that Luffy hated the idea and refused to be part of it, these seven captains completed the ritual and pledged their allegiance regardless, going on to give themselves the mission of spreading the good word of Luffy around the world for all to hear. Bartolomeo would be granted a particularly grand honor though, as he was allowed to ferry the Straw Hats to the Phantom Island of Zoe in order to meet up with the rest of the crew. During this time, Bartolomeo made sure to get autographs from all of the present Straw Hat members, being Zoro, Robin, Usopp, Frankie, and of course, Luffy, adding them to the Straw Hat Shrine, which also held their framed bounty posters. Although soon enough, the time to depart would come as the Straw Hats disembarked and began their adventure on Zoe. And while this was a tearful ordeal for Bartolomeo, there was exciting work to be done. As a captain of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet, Bartolomeo Bartolomeo swiftly sailed to spread the word of the Straw Hats, and one such adventure was detailed in the Grand Fleet cover story, which sees Bartolomeo eventually landing on an island under the control of one of the four emperors, being red-haired Shanks. However, completely disregarding this, Bartolomeo and the Bartow Club set up shop there, attempting to sell the island folk Straw Hat merchandise, and eventually, they even burned the flag of the Red Hair Pirates, much to the extreme horror of all of the townsfolk. Other than that, Bartolomeo would also appear in a silhouette during the Reverie arc, speaking directly to reporters about his one and only Luffy Senpai. Some more fun facts about Bartolomeo. In order to stay thematic, the Bartow Club is a crew that consists of exactly 56 members. This number is important because 56 is Luffy's recurring number in the series, which in Japanese can be read as Gomu. Bartolomeo's epithet being the cannibal or the man-eater, depending on your translation, may seem quite odd to an English reader, as at no stage in the series is the eating of human flesh ever attributed to him. However, this is one of those cases where the name is actually wordplay in Japanese, as to eat people can also mean to mock them. During his time as a pirate, Bartolomeo was deemed such a dangerous rookie that the world government assigned him a bounty of 150 million berries. Although after the events of Dressrosa, this amount was increased to 200 million berries. When speaking about the limitations of Bartolomeo's devil fruit, the Bari Bari no Mi, Oda gave a trademark joke statement that the barriers can only cover a maximum range of 50,000 Bari Baris. Crazily enough, Bartolomeo is absurdly popular within the One Piece fan base, at the very least the Japanese fan base, as in the fifth popularity poll, he secured ninth place, making him the then fourth most popular non-straw hat behind Trafalgar Law, Sabo, and of course, Ace. Although it should be noted that his popularity did dip in the sixth poll, only managing to come in at 30th. However, this is still incredible as he beat characters such as Eustace Kidd, Silvus Rayleigh, and even the Pirate King himself, Goldie Roger. And finally, a truly useless fact, in this scene where Bartolomeo saves Bellamy, I would like to note that if Bartolomeo's barrier was not present, then Dellinger would be kicking him square in the balls. But that pretty much does it for Bartolomeo. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, but applied to other anime manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenanigans takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101.
Do you think Haki is a cop out to allow characters to damage low gear users with godlike abilities? I think this is a pretty good question actually, because the moment Haki was properly introduced into the series, it made me very, very nervous. Up until then, what I really loved is that One Piece did not rely on a universal power system like chakra, ki, etc. And Haki seemed like it might become that. To some degree, I think it actually has. It's kind of annoying that there is such a strong focus on it in the modern era, but I do like how it's branched off into its differing forms and subforms of those forms. So it's been done pretty well so far, and I don't think it's a cop out that as a byproduct it allows Logia users to be hit. I mean, something had to put them in their place. Is One Piece your favourite anime? Uh, most definitely not. I love the One Piece manga. I think it's one of, if not the greatest stories ever told. But to be perfectly honest, the anime has butchered the series in every conceivable way. And it's been like that for well over a decade now. There was a period where the One Piece anime was pretty great, which ended around Water 7. But everything Marineford onwards is pure hot garbage. And it really pains my soul to see a series like this milked for all the cash it's worth with no artistic integrity. Do we ever get to see Namis boobs? Um...